Welcome to The Bridge, the official podcast for the University of Maryland Baltimore School of Pharmacy Patients Program. The Patients Program is the bridge between the community and researchers. The Patients Program created this partnership to help researchers listen to the community's voice in order to build a bridge to an effective learning healthcare community. Here's your host, Rodney Elliott. Jackie Caldwell, how you doing? I'm great, Rodney, how are you? I'm fantastic, awesome. Thank you for joining us today on The Bridge. Truly, truly appreciate your time. Um, before we get into today's conversation, I wanna let everybody know that we go way back. Jackie and I go way back when I first started the Patients Program about five years ago. Um, with another one of my colleagues, BJ, BJ Shaneman. She's the mega engagement specialist for West Baltimore, but Baltimore in general, got invited to participate in a um, resource fair over there in Mondaman area. And that was when you were, or still is the president of the Whittier Monroe Neighborhood Association. Um, tell us a little bit about your role as the president and uh, some of the things you did or do under that title. So I've been the president of the Whittier Monroe Community Neighborhood Association for, I don't know, maybe 15 years now. Um, once the president decided she wanted to roll out, then I rolled in and it's an affiliate of the Greater Mondawmin Coordinating Council. So this is a neighborhood that my parents moved in when I was four years old. And um, so I've lived in this block of the block Whittier Monroe area all my life. I've had the same neighbors mostly all of my life, not unless they have passed away. And then usually their children come back and take the houses over. So it's a real tight, close knit community. And um, it's a community that cares about people and the businesses and the schools that are in our area. That's for sure. I'm a Baltimore native as well, born and raised on the east side of Baltimore, but definitely have family members. West Baltimore and Mondawmin has been a staple of the Baltimore community for a very, very, very long time. I will even call it like a hub because when I was coming up, that was a hub for all the buses. When I was in high school and elementary school, you had to go to Mondawmin to get somewhere. All the buses stopped there. So Mondawmin has always been a, um, a hot spot. And, you know, you talk about being a, a neighbor, being a resident of the area all your life. Can you talk about some of the challenges that you've had being an advocate for that community. Um, challenge is good or bad, or because when I say challenge, I don't mean necessarily everything difficult or hard or challenge, but I'm just being challenged. Like you are definitely one who um, speaks highly of yourself, but also speaks highly of your community. But I'm pretty sure that gets challenges sometimes. Talk to us a little bit about some of those moments that you had where it was, oh man, I still got, I gotta just buckle down and get this done. Well, because um, I have, um, as they say, social capital, when I became president of Greater Mondawmin, it just connected me to the politicians. It connected me to the schools in the neighborhood. Um, all the potential collaborations um, came to me as the president of Greater Mondawmin because we oversaw eight neighborhoods all around the mall. And so um, once I got connected to people outside of the community that wanted to come into the community and do good work. It just became a win-win. Um, during that time, and even now, I was on a lot of boards. And I find that when you're doing community work, you have to be connected. So I was on the board of the conservatory. I was on the board of um, Neighborhood Housing Services of Baltimore. I was on the board of Innovation Works. I work with the Touchpoint piece. It's like, yeah. if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And so I found myself at a lot and a lot of tables. Um, when I became president of Greater Mondawm and I was like, this is work. And my um, mentor was like, no, Jackie, the connections that you will develop will be invaluable to your neighborhood. And that's exactly what it turned into. Um, I mean, so many great partners that want to lift up the neighborhoods. It's like once you meet one, then you just keep meeting another one and another one and another one. So. For me, the challenge was like, I wish I could have cloned myself. I mean, I was in so many <laughs> meetings. Like, you know, I would go to work and after work, I had a meeting. Then I would go to my and another meeting. But I loved all of that because I love networking. Um, I love sales, especially of my neighborhood. 
and it just really paid off in the end. Um, it was time, it was um, work, but yeah. it was enjoyable. It was fun. Um, I can't tell you how many great people that I've met um, doing this community work who really get it and who really want to be partners with Greater Mandaman area. And so the challenge for me was just um, not being able to clone myself, not being able to be everywhere. But let's be clear, I did try. Um, and so that's how I met you. Um, yeah. Uh, connected with Dr. Mullins about the patient program and how they wanted to do research in the neighborhoods to find out how people feel about their um, connection to their doctors and yep. to their medical care. And so that came to us. And so we guys did surveys with people and some people found that they didn't have a relationship with their doctors or, and as for me, I was like, you know, my doctor and I are like friends. I mean, I just can't imagine going to see someone and just being rushed through. I, I just yeah. don't have those kind of doctors. Mm -hmm. So that was a good um, outlet for the community to let them know that they do have the power when it comes to their health care and they should speak up about things that they don't find work for them or get a second opinion. There's nothing wrong yeah. with saying this doesn't work for me. I'm going somewhere else. It's like knowing that, you know, you're in charge of your own health and you have the ability to speak to your doctors. Um, it doesn't have to be that 10 minute visit, you know, um, get to know them, let them get to know you and, you know, develop those relationships. So that, that patient program that came into Greater Mondawmin was really good for the residents um, to let them know that they do have a voice. And so um, that's yeah. how I got connected to you and BJ and Dr. Mullins and I was working with you guys for a while about community work and how you guys should appear. And that was great. So it's like, you know, I just get a lot of opportunities to be at the table, um, to lift up neighborhoods and especially Greater Mondawmin. And I just really, really enjoy that. Yeah, you're right. You talk about that social capital. I like the way you phrase that. And um, that's something that the patients program, I know myself and the patients program value that a lot because, you know, when we do go into these communities, we don't want to participate in helicopter research. I mean, just coming in, getting what you want, and then swooping right back out of there. But it's people like yourself, people like other um, members of the boards that you sit on that hold us accountable, that hold people who come into the community accountable. And for me, I like that because it's about building that relationship. I don't have a relationship as a um, teammate of the patients program with the Mondaman area without contacting or chit-chatting or having a conversation with Jackie Caldwell. You know, like I said, you just don't come in people's neighborhoods and not let them know right. what's going on. I mean, right. I remember when I was president and people would come to me with different programs for the community, which would benefit the community, but they never came to me first. They came to me after they had it written, after they had the money to implement it, and then they come to me saying, we want to bring this here. So I had an opportunity to decide whether or not we want to play with you or whether or not we don't. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, what was being offered to me was something really good for the community. And I'm like, bring it in. And so, and I always say, but talk to us, but you know, it's already done then. And so I think um, the more that you're a part of things, that way people know to come to you first. Yeah. Um, I remember when um, my partner was looking at bringing Touchpoint to Mondam and Mall, which is an incubator hub for nonprofits. And I've worked as a consultant with them with a mentoring program. And so Diane Bell McCoy, the president of ABC, talked to the president of um, Whiting Turner at the time and said, this is a great idea, but you can't do this and not talk to Jackie because you got to make sure you have community input. Yeah. And we met and we talked and it was like the light went off for both of us and boom. I mean, look at the investment that's coming into the community because of that conversation and that relationship that was formed. Um, walking through alleys with them, with Whiting Turner and BGE and seeing things that they could take care of like at the drop of a hat and then buying the target space and developing that for the community. You just mm -hmm. never know where these um, relationships are gonna play out, you know, um, and how people really fall in love, not just with you, but with your, your community, more yeah. importantly, right? And so um, that has really been a blessing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to thank you again for connecting me with the manager at the time of that shoppers over there in Mondaman when the patient program wanted to run um, a segment on food deserts. And we located, we talked to the manager at shoppers and said, you know what, let me let me go see if I can get Jackie to kind of, you know, talk to him about the patient program, who we are, what we do and, and let him know, hey, we're not just trying to come and get a one off. We just want to share 
the opportunities because the food desert is a real thing and it's still going on. We were able to produce a really nice um, um, uh, video that's on our YouTube page that showed the importance of not only food desert, but also how to shop on a budget and how to shop effectively. So that was a nice piece for us as well. There were lots going on in Mondawmin, not only locally, but nationally. I mean, everything right now, but the uprising happening here in Baltimore, right in, in um, the Mondawmin area. Everything that happened with Freddie Gray, unfortunately, in the Mondawmin area. Um, when we talk about COVID, how it just kind of put a seatbelt on everyone. From your perspective, from your lens, how has the Mondawmin area pivoted since everything that's happened, pandemic, since things that have happened with um, Freddie Gray, and or has there been a pivot? The pivot has hasn't really changed but so much it's still people still wanting to invest that mm -hmm. hasn't that didn't change um uh opportunities to be heard that has not changed okay um and just not being heard but being listened to that's most important um the relationships that were forged with our um government leaders that didn't change i mean you know because you have to be able to um, have access and i'm just pretty good at getting that access you know it's like you know i i mean it's like i have your phone number uh, you know it's like you know it's like i can send an email and all of that I'm but not... at the same time let me just send you a self let me just call you yeah. and and get it done in five seconds right to, to move what needs to be moved like i said it's about being connected um so that pivot, you know, I, that hasn't changed. Um, okay, gotcha. Me, especially in Whittier Monroe and the work that I do, it hasn't changed. If anything, it's gotten bigger um, because I, for some reason, my reputation precedes me. And so I am being called- For in some reason, a lot of no, this, really? Right, for, for some, some reason, reason I don't know why. <laughs> and for, you know, for some reason, you know, so, which is all good because, you know, you have to be at the table. Um, yes. You yeah. have to know what's going on. Um, you have to let people, because people want to know how you feel about it. Not that I'm a spokesperson for this whole community because I'm not there. A number of um, neighborhood associations, um, like I said, in Greater Mondam, and it's eight of us. And so everybody has their own opinion about things and about the way things should move. I just look at it from a different lens because I was president of Greater Mondam. And, and I'm still president of Whittier Monroe and I'm still connected, even though I'm not president of Greater Monroe. Yeah, yeah. I still get called on to, to talk or speak or, you know, answer questions or just to um, connect pe connect the dots because that's what I do um, for people because, um, you know, it's just easier sometimes for me to make a phone call that you might not be able to make. There you um, go. One thing I like about the community work is that I can say, what my heavy hitters can't say because i live here and, be, and you know and i have a lot of money coming into the neighborhood and everything and, and you know you have to be careful but you know i'm i I'm gonna have no problem speaking truth to power because that, i think that touches to that social capital you talked about earlier like you said yeah. have the power to speak or say what some of the heavy hitters wouldn't say but you gotta think about it you got to have confidence and courage to do that, but you also got to, from my perspective, correct me if I'm wrong, know what you're talking about. And being a resident of that neighborhood for so long, being a president, a former president, but still a current president on some of the boards and organizations there, you have the pulse, you know the temperature of that neighborhood. So who to speak about Mondaman or speak on Mondaman's behalf other than someone like yourself? Well, I just appreciate the fact that, that, um, you know, really, this is for me. This is spiritual work. Um, this mm. is not. Um, it's it's mental work too, because you have to be connected in all kinds of ways. But for me, this is a spiritual quest that um, that God has put me on. Because um, you, like you said, you have to have strength. You have to be fearless. Yep. You have to be prayed up. Really, you have to know when to speak and when not to speak. Which I don't always have that, but you know, I'm I'm getting better. Uh, it just depends on what's going on. Um, but um, all of that yeah. is needed when you do this community work because we're not being paid for it. As I always say, I can be watching Young and the Restless. Um, but why 
But God moved me into this community piece. It was like, when I worked at the Annie E. Casey Foundation in philanthropy, you know, you see where money goes and who it goes to. And I was thinking, well, if it's going to the right places, and that's for anybody in philanthropy, why isn't it making right. a difference? The way that I think that it should be making a difference, especially where I am. So since th things didn't wasn't seeming to move the way I thought that they should move, God just put me into that community piece. Um, I walked into the Greater Mondawmin meeting. It was my first board meeting, and I got elected to be vice president. I didn't know them. I didn't know anything. I sat down. They were like, we elect. And I was sitting there like, what? And um, my your reputation like, precedes itself. That was a living example of your reputation preceding itself, Jackie. Right. And then, then my mentor told me that I didn't know them. So I figured that was a good hit. Right. <laughs> right. Because, right. You don't know us. So let's put her in. Yeah. And so that's how that flipped around, too. I mean, I wanted to see change in my neighborhoods. I mean, you know, you look through the neighborhoods and, you know, it's like you see and you don't see. And it's like when you wake up and you look around, you're like, well, how did that happen around here? How did those vacants come over here? How did those people do? I mean, it's like because you because you're living. I know for me living in my one little block in my own little world. It like, you know, it's like Mayberry through here. You know, you don't even park in my block long, um, you know, because we're looking out the window. We yep. are helping our neighbors. We're not yep. parking in front of each other's doors. You know, I still live that way. And most neighborhoods do not, and but we do here on, on my block of Whittier Avenue. We're just crazy, and man, that, probably that, because I'm the one. That's no, no, the block I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say crazy, crazy, but you know what? That reminds me of my childhood and my youth growing up, when the neighborhood policed itself, so to speak, right? You know, nobody. When I'm outside doing something I'm not supposed to do, believe me, my, if my mom didn't know, somebody down the street knew, and it would get back to her, and that would put me right back in check. And that was all my friends, and that was how it just went down. So having those type of um, arms, extended arms around you in your neighborhood is awesome. And to see that it's still going on currently in today's climate is fantastic. So kudos to you, Jackie, and the neighbors there, whether you're for wanting to have that type of... Um, living love. it's really about love because love. you know I, have, I live right next to douglas high school and so when the kids walk through my block you know i'm going to speak to them in the morning when i see them when i see them walking around when it's not when it's school time i'm like you're not in school today <laughs> and look and let's be clear i'm nobody's mother but i can sound like it right <laughs> like you know why aren't you in school son or you know how was your day like i don't want you to know that i see you and that, you know, you need to go to school, you know, yeah. you need to be doing the, I mean, because they need to be told that, that somebody sees you and that somebody cares about you. So it's really good living near school in a way because you get to see and hear. I think you've always been, since I've known you, someone that speaks up for themselves, speaks up for their community and be an advocate as much as you can, specifically, um, saw you most recently at um, a community conversation that the Associated Black Charities has put on. They put them on monthly. We'll probably have one of their um, staff or members uh, join us on the bridge later this year as well. But they put them on monthly and they give an opportunity for community members to share their feelings or opinions or thoughts on things that are going on in their community. So back in April, that's where I saw you were reconnected. It was great to see you and you had an opportunity to share um what's going on in the community so jackie do you think that the conversations or having that form or having that space like you talked about earlier is 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 a safe and productive opportunity for community members or um or whoever wants to attend well i mean you don't have anything to lose um by hearing what other people think about their neighborhoods and hopefully find the solutions to what you look with whatever's going on i mean that's what i was looking for um yep in that um but it wasn't that type of conversation it was more about tell me what's going on and let's talk about the resources that the neighborhood has okay so you know i expressed one of my concerns and so um my job is just to keep up the fight with who i need to fight with um and that's okay because you know like they say i ain't no ways tired so it's all good but you know i think that um the more people get to hear what the complaints are and then the, the resources that they have. I mean, we had a young man there talking about the young people and how he doesn't feel safe and mm -hmm. you know, his that. whole situation. And my um, business partner was able to go to him and say, you know, we have a mentoring program for young men. 
and sign him up for that. I mean, because a lot of things we do in the community are not out there um, the way that they should be. Um, the new president or the new ED from Greater Mundam, and that'll be his job to make sure we have media presence um, so that people will know what we're doing. Um, I saw he was there and he definitely got an earful and I hope he wrote some things down on his notepad. And that's how you partner with what the neighbor, what the communities want. It was like when I was bringing in things, I was doing more um, development work. Like I got the um, the mansion on Akinta Raleigh and Gwens Falls Parkway. I helped them find the funding for that. Oh. Then we did the porch project, which came down on the right-hand side of Gwens Falls Parkway. But we did 18 houses over with new porches and new columns and all of that, right? So I'm really involved in like infrastructure um, repair um, with neighborhood housing services. We're buying over a hundred houses in the in the um, Panway neighborhood that we are renovating and selling. I mean, we sold probably three so far. Beautifully done, central air. I mean, you name it, mm -hmm. outstanding. Going for two forty in neighborhoods. I mean, reasonable, right? Um, first time home buyers programs. Um, then we're putting that we put that 25 million right below Coppin with the high rise and with the mill at North, which is getting ready to open, which will be an eatery where Truist Bank is. Um, then my partner bought Target. That's gonna be a big asset in the community. We got $10 million getting ready to go over there at the west side. Um, it was a, a school, but now it's gonna be like a cultural center and park for the it's gonna be beautiful. You're a lifer. You, you sound like to me, Jackie. You are a Mondam in East ba West Baltimore lifer there. Um, until and, I meet a millionaire. That, uh, until you meet a millionaire. There we go. We're going to put that in, in the air. Until you meet a millionaire, you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I've lived in these blocks since I was four years old. My my mother has a house next door that she bought that my brother lived in. He died, and then my nephew is going to move in there, and he's getting that renovated, and I own a house up the street. Jackie, we're not going to take too much more of your time, but I couldn't get leave this conversation without talking about some of the work you currently do now. She's on a board at the Bayer School, um, which is a pre-K through 12th grade school in Baltimore City, and they provide inclusive therapeutic education for students with multiple disabilities. Jackie, how did you become a member of the Bayer School's board after or in addition to all the work you're doing for the West Baltimore community? So when I was president of Greater Mondawmin, um, well, first when I was in the second grade, when I went to Robert W. Coleman Elementary, which is in the community, and they took us there for an activity. And I had never been around kids with special needs before. And I just never forgot um, kids with traits or the things that I saw that I had never seen. So I was in the second grade. And then when I became president of Greater Mondawmin, since the William S. Bear School is in our neighborhood, called them and I said, what do you need for Christmas? Wow. Do you need toys? And they said, no, we need bibs, diapers, and wipes because we change 200 diapers a day. And I was like, okay. So I went to a meeting at Bard Early Learning College, which is the old Lamel. I'm sitting next to former mayor, Jack Young, and I told Jack about it. And Jack's like, I'll give you 2,500. Then I talked to my business partner at Whiting Turner. Um, he said, I'll give you 2,500. So I was able to give them a $5,000 gift toward bibs, diapers, and wipes. So out of doing that, then it turned into, we need you on the board. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay. I mean, I was on the boards already, but I loved the Bay School. It was just something that I just never forgot. So I went back over there as a board member where I helped them connect the dots for funding or you need a letter signed by somebody that they can't get to. And I'm like, I know them. So connecting the dots with the school because I love I loved the school. And so I retired from the Annie E. Casey Foundation in January. So I figured, you know, um, I would just, you know, wait for my checks to come. And so in April, I got a phone call from the board chair saying that this, the lady who ran our development area was leaving, moving to Seattle, Washington. But I didn't know that. And they wanted me to, they wanted to talk to me. So I went up there thinking it's about, you need me to help you connect to a grant or something like that. But what they were offering me was a part-time position to come in and be the person that connects the dot for the Bear School. Wow. So my job is to bring in the funding for things that they need at the school that the Baltimore City budget does not allow for. Right. So right now I'm working on a thirty three hundred thousand dollar health suite ask 
I'm working on um, other things that the librarian might, I mean, the, the, um, the principal might want, like she would like to see the library redone or something else redone. I mean, it's an old building, but it's a building of promise. It's beautiful in there. We, I've met, met teachers that have been there 20, 30 years. The principal that's there now, Principal Sockwell, that was her first job out of college. Wow. She taught there. Then she became a vice principal. Now she's a principal. Wow. Okay. I mean, you're talking about love. I mean, like I said. That sounds like that may have been one of the contributing factors to you taking that position because she, first job she got out of college, talking about the principal, she yeah. vice principal, she taught there vice principal. So she kind of went through the rigors of things that's going on at the Bear School. And you've been a lifer over there again for West Baltimore. So I'm pretty sure when you heard that and talking about it, that you knew that partnering with her or joining a group like that would be, um, your guys' goals and aims were aligned, I should say. I just couldn't tell them no. If you've <laughs> never been to the Bear School, I invite you to come. Um, my job is, like I said, to raise the money for things that we need. And all I all I feel is I, I need to take you on a tour. Once I take you on a tour and you have the means to give and the heart to give, wow. it's not a hard give to give. I'm telling you, man. It is just a school of love and compassion and... I mean, you might look at a child and say that they're not walking and they're not talking. But that doesn't mean it's going to always look that way. I call it the light on the hill. We have kids that came in that way, but at graduation, they're running through the halls. <laughs> I mean, I've met parents that come in with their children crying because this is the first time they're bringing them to a school and they're not sure about, is my child going to be treated right? Or are they going to be misused? I mean, you know, all those yeah. anxieties you have because we have round the clock um, enrollment there. We go from ages three to 21. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to have our prom and our graduation. <laughs> um, we have four kids that are graduating. Um, right View is, is sponsoring the prom. Um, we just had the Bear Athlon, which is like our special Olympics where you walk the kids around or you push them around in their wheelchairs or you run with them. You know, it's a predominantly African-American school. Because when I talk to most people, they don't know about the William S. Bear School. I think you only know about it because you have to know about it. If you don't have a kid with special needs, yeah. you wouldn't know. Right. Well, you would think about Kennedy Krieger. My job is to give Kennedy Krieger a run for his money. Gotcha. A, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So, um... Jackie, that, that, that was fantastic. And when I researched um, your position there, and I saw the mural that was painted on there, I'm not sure how long that mural's been there, but I want to say I've seen that somewhere before um, about the mural that's painted on the school. On the back of the school? On the back it of the like, school. It looks like um, buildings. Yes. Is that fairly that was, new? That, yes. That was done by Black female engineers that came in and painted that mural on the back of the building. So it looks like a little city on the wall. And I have like stop sign, yep. go. But then yep. we have the bear school is a quarter of a mile around. I'm going to be a skeleton working in there. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's a quarter of a mile around. And then we have all this outdoor space. We have an outdoor classroom. We have a playground. We just work with BGE. They came over to um, plant a pumpkin patch so that our kids can have their pumpkins in October. We have a swing garden there so that kids in wheelchairs can be put in this swing, this huge swing so that they can swing like other kids. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, it, it, I'm just, everybody I know, I'm bringing them over there for a tour. And I truly appreciate you um, for the things and the work that you've done in your own community, um, for the work that you do when you speak about other people's issues and how they feel in different forums. I appreciate you for having that confidence to um speak your mind and 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 share your concerns um passionately to folks and another thing unapologetically that's another thing in this space like you mentioned earlier you don't you haven't been getting paid for this you know you 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 you, you do this out of the, the 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 care of your heart and i that's a testament to um you your work that you do community you serve and in the patient program, we do a lot of snapping when we hear good things or we someone says a good thing. And I'm just going to give you the snaps, Jackie, for all the work that you do over there for West Baltimore and particularly for that Bear School. 
Um, it's and, and just to say, and, and, Rodney, real quick, it's not me, right? I, I don't want to take credit for anything that I okay. have done because it's all about him. You know, it's like Amen. God tells me, like, go to that meeting, sit next to that person, say something to them. I mean, it's just like that, right? And so since I've been working this one month at the Bear School, I had to send them a thank you for being such a great team and a great mentor to me. Because, I mean, they know me from the board, but it's different when you now come in saying, what do you need? I'm going to get that for you. And they have just been so supportive from the assistant vice principals to the principal, to the um, staff in the front office, to Miss Dana, to the social workers that I've met, to the occupational therapist, the art teacher. I mean, I've worked a lot of places. I mean, you say you have eight jobs in a lifetime and I've had them. <laughs> this one here, like the Bible says, he'll make your latter days better than your former days. Mm -hmm. And this is what this reminds me of with that. Like all that you've been through in these other places, you know, you got to whatever. You don't have none of that over here. Good. All we want you to do is, is just bring in the money, number one, but love us too. And I mean, what, what more can you ask for? Jackie, your hard work isn't going unnoticed. That's what I will say on that so congratulations on your new position there i know you're gonna you. be fantastic for the bear school thanks for every and all the things you do for greater Mondawmin area and last but not least thank you for jumping on the bridge with us and giving us another fantastic um conversation with someone who definitely cares and loves their community and the work yeah. they do yeah, i appreciate it thanks for having me thank you jackie really appreciate it until next time thank you have a good one everyone Thank you for listening to The Bridge Podcast. To learn more about the Patients Program, visit our website at www.patients.umaryland.edu.